All right, next up is the geometric distribution. So we've we've seen this already um, a little a bit earlier. So the geometric distribution is what happen is what we get when we think about tossing a coin, a P coin. Um, until we observe the first head. So that is the geometric distribution. So there's a single parameter P and P is a probability, a number between zero and one. So the way we define this is we let W be, this is the distribution of a random variable, which we'll call it W. W stands for waiting time. W is gonna be the waiting time. Or the first head. Uh, when we toss a P coin repeatedly and independently. So uh, we're going to toss, we have a P coin, which means probability of heads is P. Tails is one minus P. And we toss until the first head. So that means if W is equal to N, the event that W is equal to N um, indicates that the first head occurs on Nth toss. So this would be tail, 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 and then head. So this would be n minus one times. Okay. What is the probability mass function of this random variable? Well, we've already calculated it and it's somewhat intuitive, uh, but we can, well, it's, it's, we can derive it again. Let me write this here. Put this here. Okay. So because of independence and uh, we're tossing a P coin repeatedly. So to in order to see, in order to um, get N minus one heads and N minus one tails followed by a head, we have to get P minus one times P minus one times P minus one. That's, or, I'm sorry, one minus P times one minus P times one minus P, et cetera. That's N minus one times. And then the nth toss has to be a P and then we're done. And the minimum value is one because we have to toss it at least once to see a head. And if the first toss is a head, um, we, get, um, we get a value of one. The distribution function, which is the cumulative distribution function, the probability that W is less than or equal to N for any given N, this is the sum over values K from one to N of the probability mass function. So let me define the probability mass function here, P sub W of N and it's P sub W of K. This is the geometric sum, the partial geometric sum of K equals one to N, one minus P to the K minus one times P. How do we do this? Well, we can pull the P out and realize that what this is equal to is actually, we can rewrite it in a clever way. K equals one to infinity of one minus P to the K minus one minus, I'm sorry. Uh, da, da, da. Oh no, that's fine. 
uh, k equals n plus 1 to infinity of 1 minus p to the k minus 1. Now, why is that a good thing to do? Because we're talking about um, the geometric sum. So if we have a value of x strictly less than 1, um, something that's good to know is that the sum from j equals 0 to infinity of x to the power j is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay? And therefore, if we actually were to, if we were to say, well, what's the sum from j equals k to infinity of x to the power j? Well, we can factor an x to the power k out, right? And then what we have is we x e j equals k to infinity of x to the j minus k. We can re-index. So we can say, well, that's actually the same as going, say, from i equals 0 to infinity of x to the power i. Because j equals k is going to have about, is going to be x to the k minus k, x to the 0. k plus 1 is going to be k plus 1 minus k is x to the 1 and so on. And so what we're left with is, again, this is 1 over 1 minus x. So this is x to the k over 1 minus x. So that's a little bit of side scratch work. Let's see how that works. I don't want that. Uh, okay, good. So let me kind of just set this aside. And what we're going to do All right, let me shrink this down just so it's not in the way. And so with that in mind, what do we get? We get P. This is one over one minus one minus P. This is actually one over P minus, and here we have one minus P to the power N over P. So um, the p's in the, in the top and bottom are going to cancel, and we're going to left with 1 minus 1 minus p to the n. Okay. How do we take, how do we deal with the expected value? How do we calculate the expected value here? Expected value of w, by definition, sum over all values k, k, P, W, K. K, one minus P to the K minus one times P. And here's where, where we need to be a little clever um, to realize, okay, how are we gonna add this up? Little tricky, um, but one thing to notice here is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna, Pull this P out, so I have P, and I'm going to reparameterize, so I get K equals 1 to infinity, actually I'm going to do K equals 0 to infinity, of Q to the power K, this is where Q is defined as 1 minus P, oh, K times Q to the power K. Uh, no, what am I doing? Can't do that. Um, No. Leave it at one. We get q to the k minus one. Okay. All right. So now one thing to realize that's interesting here is if I have a very a, a constant k, then if I think about taking the derivative of this monomial q to the k, what is that derivative? Well, that derivative is you take the exponent down and you reduce the exponent or the, the exponent by one. So you have K times Q to the K minus one. Well, that's exactly what we have here. So another way to then write this is, well, this is actually P times the derivative D D Q of the sum 
from k equals zero to infinity, q to the k. And why, okay, why can we add the k equals zero in? Because q, k equals zero is gonna be q to the zero. That's just one. When we take the derivative, the derivative of the constant is zero, it's just gonna disappear. Okay, but now why is that so important is because we know what that sum is. We just did it up here. It's one over one minus Q. So what we're left with is we have P times the derivative d d q of one over one minus Q. And we, can, we know how to take that derivative. That's just gonna be P times one over one minus Q squared. 1 minus q is p, so this is actually p over p squared, so this is 1 over p, okay? So the expectation is 1 over p. The expectation, if p is increasing, our expected time to wait is less because we expect to hit the head sooner. If p is a small, very small value, we actually expect to wait a long time to see the first head because the probability of heads is small. All right, um, we can also calculate conditional distributions for the geometric. And this is something that's pretty interesting and, and, and a pretty unique property of the geometric distribution, which is let's let N be bigger than K. And we wanna calculate the probability that W is equal to N given that W is bigger than K. So what you wanna say is you're saying, so. I've already weighted K. I've already been tossing, I've, tossed, I've already tossed K tails in a row. How much longer do I have to wait, right? What is the distribution of my additional waiting time given that I've waited so long? So there's kind of a tendency to think um, that if, that once something's taken a while to happen, it's due to happen soon, um, but Sometimes maybe that is the case and sometimes it's not. And we have to understand that statistically, that's definitely not always the case. Um, so what is this? How do we calculate this? So let's not get, let's not get overwhelmed by uh, kind of seeing this, this for the first time. And there's a lot of symbols getting thrown around here. What is the definition of conditional probability? Probability of B given A is the probability of A and B divided by probability of A. So what are what is A and what is B in this case? Well, it's probably that W is equal to N intersect W bigger than K divided by probability that W is bigger than K. Okay, now what is the probability that W is equal to N and W is bigger than K? Well, we've already assumed that N is bigger than K. So if we know that W was equal to N, then we also know that W is bigger than K because N is bigger than K. So that's a redundant statement. So we can simplify this to just probably that W is equal to N. And what's the probability that W is bigger than K? Remember, we already know, well, the complement of being bigger than K is being less than or equal to K. So it's, it's one minus the probability of its complement, okay? So now what's the probability that W is equal to N based on the probability mass function? It's one minus P to the N minus one times P. And then what's the, um, what's probability of W less than or equal to K? Well, we already calculated here. It's one minus one minus P to the K. But then we're taking a one minus on that, right? So it's one minus, one minus, one minus P to the K. So the one minus is cancel out and we're left with one minus P to the N minus one times P divided by one minus P to the K. So we can do a little rearrangement here and what we end up with is one minus P to the N minus K minus one times P. So what's interesting about that is that this should look familiar. Let me just write this. This 
This should look familiar because it actually is the, is the probability mass function. So given that W is already bigger than K, how much additional time do we have to wait Right. This is saying that if I take the additional amount of time I have to wait, which is W minus the time I've already waited, this has the distribution. It's the same. It looks exactly the same, right? This is exactly the same. This extra waiting time is distributed as a geometric P random variable. Okay, so this, in other words, given that I've waited some amount of time, what is the distribution of the remaining time? And what this is saying is it's the same as when you started. So your, your waiting time does not change as you go along. This is what's called the memoryless property. This is called the memoryless property. So if I've been tossed in a coin, and I've tossed it a hundred times already, haven't seen the first head, what's the distribution of the remaining tosses? It's geometric P. So those hundred tosses I've already made, those are already done and forgotten, and they have no additional impact on any of the remaining tosses. Okay. So now given that we have uh, this memory of this property, it actually gives us an, an alternative way to compute the expectation. So up above, we calculated the expectation of W. We had to use a little bit of a trick, which was to rewrite this sum as a, and, and make it look like the derivative of something that we knew, that we knew, that we knew. An alternative way here is we can condition on the first toss. So we, cause we know the, um, we know the conditional distribution we can condition on the first toss. So the, the, the expectation of W, right, is equal to, well, it's the value of W if, if the first toss is ahead. So it's one times the probability that W equals one plus it's the expectation of W, given that we've already seen one toss, right? So in other words, it's the expectation of W, but that's just W, right? After the first toss, if we've, if we've missed the first toss, in other words, if the first toss was a tail, then we have one additional toss and then we start over again effectively. So the remaining amount of time is just a geometric random variable. The expected time into the future is the same plus the first toss. So what we're left with here is probability of W equal to one is P, probably W greater than one is one minus P times the expectation of W plus one. So we have expectation of W and then plus one. And so now we have an expression of one equation, one unknown, and we can solve this for the expectation of W. Okay. Now, how do we calculate the variance of the geometric? So it's a little tricky. Um, so the variance, of course, the definition, we use the computing formula, W expectation of W squared minus the expectation of W quantity squared. Okay, now, how are we gonna do this? Well, we already know the expectation of W, so we're okay there. We need to calculate the expectation of W squared. The problem with that is that if we try to go straight from the definition, 
So if we try to say, okay, this is sum over possible values of W square times the probability, which is one minus P K minus one to the P. There's not nothing that I'm aware of that's gonna allow us to actually do that calculation. So what well, in particular, we're not quite in the same realm that we were up here where we were able to express the express this as a derivative, right? Using this fact. Okay. So we're not in business. We're not in business yet. So this is something, this is where we um, need to be a little clever again. So how are we going to be clever? Well, instead of going straight for expectation of W squared, let's not do that. Let's calculate what's later going to be called a, factor, a factorial moment. What if we calculate the expectation of W times W minus one? So we're using the fact that we already, um, we already established previously is that the expectation of a function is the sum of the function times the original probability mass function. And so here, what is this? This is, again, this is sum over all possible values of the variable w of the function of, K, of w times the original probability mass function. Okay. Now, what makes that so interesting is we look back to here and we think about, well, is there something more we can do with this? Well, what if we took a second derivative with respect to Q here? What would happen? Well, we would get a K on the first pull and a K minus one on the second, and we'd get Q to the K minus two, right? So we don't quite have that here. We have K, K minus one, Q to the K minus one, but we're not far off. And in order to make that make that look like a Q to the K minus two, we have to, we can just pull the constant out in front. So we can pull constants out as long as we correct for it. We can't pull variables that are the sum, the index of the summation. So we pull the P out always. We pull a one minus P out. And then what we're left with is K equals one to infinity k, k minus one, one minus p to the k minus two. And the thing to notice here is that, okay, for k equals one, this term is actually zero. So that's gonna zero out this term. So we can actually change this and make this a sum from k equals two to infinity. If we do that, what happens? We realize that this is equal to, this can be expressed as, second derivative with respect to Q sum from K equals zero to infinity Q to the K. Q to the K plus two, okay. Make sure I let's make sure I have this right. I think it's just Q to the K. Okay. So if I do that, then 
What am I left with? I have one. One minus P times second derivative of one over one minus Q, which is one over P. First derivative is minus one over P. First derivative is minus one over P squared. No, 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 what am I doing? Sorry about that. Should, it should still be one minus Q because I'm taking the derivative with respect to Q. All right, so what I'm left with is P one minus P and I'm, I have one over one minus Q squared. That's the first derivative, second derivative I have two over one minus Q to, to the third. Okay. Okay, one minus Q to the third is just P to the third. Okay, so what I'm left with here is I have two P, why is this? One minus P over P to the third. And that simplifies to two times one minus P over P squared. So that's this factorial moment. And what we're trying to do is get the expectation of W squared. But how do we do it? Well, the factorial moment, expectation of W, W minus one equals expectation of W squared minus W equals expectation of W squared minus expectation of W. Okay. This is equal to expectation of W squared minus one over P. And we've just calculated that this is equal to two times one minus P over P squared. So what does that tell us? That tells us that expectation of W squared is one over P plus two times one minus P over P squared. And the variance, therefore, is that quantity minus one over P, minus the expectation squared, one over P squared, which we can simplify as one minus P over P squared. One final thing to point out is that there is an alternative parameterization and some books prefer this. What that is, is we define V not to be the number of tosses before the first head, but to be the number of tails before the first head. So the random variable is the number of tails before the first head. So what's the difference? So what's the difference? Well, let's write it down. Let's, let's, we have W remember was number of tosses. So what's the difference between the number of tosses and the number of number of tosses until first head? Number of tosses and the number of tails is that one of them includes the, the head and one of them doesn't. So if T, if my outcome is T, 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 H, then the number of tails is four, the number of tosses 
is five. So in this case, what we would do is we would define, we would say that V is equal in distribution to W minus one. So if we, if we take W, we subtract one, then we have V. So they're, they're not different. It's just a different way of thinking or a different way of parameterizing. So then if I wanted to get the mass function of V, I realize, well, V is actually W minus one. So W is V plus one. So I can just use what I know already about the mass function of W and I get P times, instead of P times one minus P to the K minus one, I'm just gonna have, in this case, V, uh, P times one minus P to the V. And in this case, V can be anywhere from zero, any integer, including zero, not starting at one, because when we are only counting tails, if the first head, if the first toss is a head, then there's no tails. So zero is a possibility. The expectation of V is just the expectation of W minus one, which is one over P minus one. This is... Q over P, the variance of V is the variance of W minus one, which is just the variance of W, which is one minus P over P squared. So there is something kind of nice about it is that the expectation and variance have kind of a similarity that you just add this extra P, P squared in the, in the, in the, an extra factor of P in the denominator to get the variance. Um, and there might be some situation in which you prefer one over the other, but it's important to understand when you're working with one and when you're working with the other, although from a technical point of view, it really doesn't make any difference.